Hi everyone. I had one request to do a Kumiko tutorial, so I'm doing it this time. I'm so happy to have an interaction with you. Of course, I'm not a professional at all, so it's just like I share tips that I found from what I experienced and just do the best I can for the request. This is going to be a long video, so you can skip any points you don't need to listen to. I just want to cover all I experienced so someone may find it helpful. Okay, let me start my Mitsukude Kumiko tutorial. First, let me highlight the wood choice. I recommend you to try bass wood or any soft wood for the first time, and the thickness can be around 1 8. Don't underestimate it, it gets strong once it's assembled. And this time, I'll make Mitsukude so the strip width better be 3 eighths, 9 sixteenths or 3 quarters. And I go with 3 eighths. These are the strips I got from a craft store, but I have a video how to easily cut these strips by hand tools in the description. Now the saw choice. I usually cut Kumiko by this saw. This is the exacto one, and I also sometimes use Hobby Lobby one randomly. They are cheap and easily available. As long as the blade is a thin profile, anything can be okay. Like when I did Hida Kumiko, I used this flash trim saw. This doesn't have a set, so it's perfect for Kumiko. However, the reason I don't usually use this flash trim saw for the Kumiko is this cuts things too good, so it's difficult for me to control the depth of the cut. Some people use magnets or something to stop it from going too deep, but I just don't use. If you are comfortable with controlling the cutting depth, I don't see any reason going with this small saw, especially when you put this stabilizer that you can make so easy. Okay, now let's get prepared. First, I make a cutting guide. I use this bevel square and the triangle or the set square, whatever you call it. I used to use an angle finder, but this is so much easier. You can put painter's tape and then put the wood. The wood is to stabilize the saw blade. Then, this is my workbench and it's an oak board from an old cabinet door. I glue a dowel that has the same height as the strip like this. And I put 60 degree supporting wood too. I used to nail the dowel to the board but I realized just glue is good enough. Now it's time to cut the strips in the lengths I need for Mitsukude. I will explain the details of the cutout patterns later but at this time Please be sure to cut at least one inch longer than you need, and ensure the one side is really square. I recommend using a big saw, so it can cut square easily, or like me, you can use a plane. Then mark one end, so you know which side is square just in case. Okay, before fabricating pieces. Let me explain what kind of pieces you will need. First, the Mitsukude is composed of two types of pieces, the vertical pieces in red and crossing pieces in green. Just so you know, the crossing pieces look like they need two different direction cutouts, but they are actually the same. And I like to set 1 inch and 7 16 as an interval. Now, let me tell you about the vertical pieces cutouts. There is a 60 degree cutout every 1 inch and 7 sixteenths. Notice, it's not the distance in between the cutouts, but the distance between the same side of the cutouts. The flip side has the exact same cutouts too. The depth of the cutouts is 1 third of the strip width from top and bottom. Don't worry about the cutout width at this moment. Now the crossing pieces. It has the 60 degree angle, which is the same as the vertical pieces. However, this strip needs a crossing line on the same side, so you need to add 120 degree cutout. Please note, both cutout have the different cutout depth. The 60 degree one is two thirds of the strip width, and the 120 degree one is half of the strip width. Okay, 
Let's work on the vertical pieces. I usually set 4-5 strips together and mark on the very first strip, but for this video, I pick up one strip to mark, and then I added the rest of the 3-4 pieces to work on together. I just thought it's better for the video, but you can do it in the way you think is easiest. Now I'm setting one inch point of the ruler on half an inch from the right end of the wood to make half an inch offset and then mark every 1 inch and 7 sixteenths by using math. The ruler has to be fixed. In this way, even when you happen to mark a little off somewhere in the middle, it doesn't affect other slot locations. If you want to measure a piece longer than the ruler you have, like me now, always use two points to be sure it's the good position. And now we have to find the cutout width. It has to be the wood thickness divided by a square root of 3 times 2 and for the 1 eighth of an inch, it's close to 0 0.14433756792 inches. I know imperial system doesn't do well with decimals, but it's somewhere between 964 and 530 seconds. However, every wood strip has a small difference even when it's labeled the same 1 eighth of an inch, and depending on the material and its softness, the slot width should be different, like basswood can fit in a real tight slot while maple doesn't. So what I do is, like the picture, I use a different part of the measure line like left, right and middle part of the line to find the best one by testing it a couple of times. For this process, as long as the interval marking is accurate, you can use it as a reference and move the ruler to mark every cutout width. Now I can set the rest of the pieces to mark the diagonal lines with the jig. But before doing it, please be sure to mark the first mark position on the flip side like the picture too. This is going to ensure both top and bottom sides are starting from the exact same point when you mark the flip side. Finally, I can cut them. If you use the cheap hobby saw, be sure to wipe the blade with lube oil often, or the blade won't move well. And at the first time, since you need to cut the jig along with the strips, it will take time. I basically cut 1 16th of an inch with the cutting jig to make a good enough cuff lines for all the marked lines first, and then cut them until the depth needed without a jig. It's faster to me. When you cut without a jig, please use your index finger to control the blade angle. Because of a saw or your habit, a saw always wants to tilt to the left or right. Anyways, I stupidly cut out two thirds of the wood strip while I only need it for one third. So I did it again and cleaned the cutout with one ace chisel. Once you are done with it, now do the flip side of the vertical pieces. Remember, I put the mark for the first cutout line so I can measure everything from there. Just to double check, I still measure from one end, just like I did for the other side. Then I did the same process of the measuring and cutting to finish the vertical pieces. Now the crossing pieces. To start with, it is basically the same as the vertical pieces to do the first 60 degree. But after doing the same marking, I marked the opposite side of the first chip, like the picture by using a square for all the slots. You will use these marks for 120 degree cutout later. For the crossing pieces, you will need to cut in two thirds of the strip width. It seems like I did a good job for this cut, but let me tell you how you can crack the width of the cutout as long as it's narrower than the actual strip width. I put one or two strips in the slots to stabilize all the strips, and then by a large chisel, I clean the slot until the marked lines. If it's still too small, then please chisel the left side of the slot. The right side is the reference line. 
So if you go over the right side, you won't be able to assemble nicely. After finishing all the 60 degree cutouts, now you need to modify the jig. Here is how you can mark 120 degree. By using the marked point with 120 degree jig, just mark lines like the picture and then cut them out. This doesn't need math. It's time to assemble. You need to lay all vertical pieces and start with a crossing piece from the center. Then flip it and do the same thing. You always have to alternate and work on from the center or it won't fit easily unless your cut is 100% accurate and straight. When I glue, I just put a little bit on one side and from my experience, Tight Bond 3 has a good working time. After assemble it, depending on my cut accuracy, the Kumiko may twist, so I usually put some weight on Kumiko overnight. Then sand it from 120 to 20 and 400 grit and trim the edges by a flash trim saw. Now it's done but let me tell you the size of Kumiko once again for where you want to embed this. Here's the reason why I like to set my Kumiko interval as 1 inch and 7 16 for 1 eighth of an inch strip. When you do 1 inch and 7 16 Kumiko, the width is a super tiny bit shorter than 1 inch and quarter. So it's easy to calculate the width of the Kumiko. If you use 4 vertical strips like me, there are 3 triangles in between so the width should be 3 inch and 3 quarters. I know the actual width is a little shorter than 3 inch and 3 quarters, but see the both ends. It has 1 16th leeway on both sides, so it's actually a little bit wider than 3 inch and 3 quarters. That means you can sand or shape the kumiko a little bit to fit snug where you want. With this logic, to calculate the width, you can try up to 26 vertical strips. Actually, for up to 13 vertical strips, you can add 1 16th to the width. In my case, 3 inch and 13 16th. So you don't have to sand down a lot. That's pretty much it. I hope you won't feel making it is as difficult as explaining it in the following language. And I also hope my explanation doesn't confuse you further. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!